Warning, this program is intended for adults of legal drinking age. Whiskey is consumed and discussed. The intent is to educate our palates on the differences of whiskey flavors and not an intent to get drunk. Please drink responsibly. Hi, everybody. Uh, so, whiskey, we fucking love it. And uh, so we decided to do a show called I Fucking Love Whiskey, because we do. My name is Joseph Limbaugh. And as always, I'm joined by my co-host, uh, Mr. Andrew Pierce. Hi, I also fucking love whiskey. And today we have a wonderful guest. Marie Soleil Chabot is in the other window there. Hello, Marie Soleil. Hello, guys. Thank you Normally for she's me. in the chat, but now she's going to be drinking with us. Okay. Right? This is exciting. Yeah. I concur. Uh, uh, it's super exciting because the uh, random number, random... Uh, random.org get your random here um random.org uh, picked out four remarkable whiskeys and we're starting off with the brook laddie black art i know what, look at this look at this oh, yeah. i know minds are blown and which version is this what's the what's the um because there are the, uh, the um 6.1 right okay 8.1 8.1 sorry 8.1 yeah look at that beautiful stuff that thing 26 years old that's the youngest whiskey in here is 26. It's a, it's a vatted uh, <laughs> dark art secret. Um, I predict you know what up... science is this. I predict that no, no science is done on this. I, I do not want whiskey. to science this. That's my prediction. Like we're gonna, we're gonna pay a tribute by not sciencing it. Yeah. For now, it's... at least for now. Yeah. Oh, oh man. man. Oh, That's just man. so magical. This is starting on a strong note. It really like, is. Yeah. Like there's um lemon coated hay. Uh, it's uh, so it's smooth hard. though. There's no burn or heat in it at all. It's like a laser beam of delicious caramel shot into my nose. But it's there's more it's more than just caramel. Like it's got it's just, it's so complicated. Like there's a lot of little smells in there. Like there's there's savory smells. Like it's it's really it's all of the delicious food from a carnival <laughs> fired in fired into my nose on a laser. That's what it is. You know, I'm gonna say all the delicious food from a carnival and all the delicious food that you eat when you go to Europe. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> okay, so it's it's sauteed, there's a lot of sauces and butter. Everything, uh, but also like, you know, uh, croissants, uh, really good baguettes, um, you know, the only the, ver the only the good food like in Europe, you know? Mm -hmm. I get some, I get some like unripe fruitiness, like a bit of not necessarily acidity, but just like something that's a little greener. Yeah. I get a bit of grass. Um, that's the yeah. hay. I think I'm, I'm smelling that sort of thing. Yeah. There's also even better. It's like um like uh like that that grassy um sort of smell, but then the, it's like wrapped around like um a butter cookie, you know, or like a like maybe a digestive. And there's something like a bitter medicine uh, smell right at the very bottom of that. Caramel apple would be a little too sweet, Darth Brunch. Just a little I too think, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, this is like, it's like having a, a fancy British picnic with um, like uh, not super sweet uh, British um, desserts on a lawn, on a freshly mowed lawn. Like that's the house they would build is like, this is a, this is a picnic on I a see, freshly mowed lawn. I see a scone. Yeah. A scone with like butter and a bit of some jam, but I can't tell exactly what jam if it's raspberry. I would say it's black currant. I would say like black, black just a bit of black, black currant, currant towards that end. Oh yeah. I think, I think the uh, merry-go-round over here is powered by diesel. <laughs> Maybe, but that's that's <laughs> that's deep in there. That's that's me. That's it's that's, it's going in deep. All right, let's go in. Yeah. Oh my god. There it is. Oh, that's my favorite whiskey. Yeah. Are we having a favorite whiskey in the first whiskey? Yep. I don't know if that's there, ever happened. Is there happened. an alert? Yeah. There should be probably alert. <laughs> Indeed there is. I feel like you've seen the show before. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's on to us. I have seen the show and I like it. And that's why I'm so happy to be here. On to us. How did she predict it? Yeah. Yeah, to me, the, the the crazy thing about Blackguard is like the nose is amazing, but then the flavor, it's like, it's such a, it's it's such a perfect like data point, like beyond where the nose is, you know? Like it's, it's, it's not surprising, but that's not a bad thing. Like it's perfect. No. You know? It delivers on it, and and like all of the that rich sauce and butter is in the finish. It's still there. It's still like this cre creamy, buttery coating on the back of my mouth. Oh, but it's still delicate. I yeah. find that it's not in your face too much. It's like well balanced and just subtle, but subtle in a in a very like a fancy way or like in a like an elegant kind of. Now I'm getting a bit of paint, profile. like, uh, like, uh, you know, like an indoor paint. Man. Yeah, it is. You do, you do have to kind of take your time and unpack it a bit because it does. It, there is, I call it just so many little, little tiny. It's like a fine, you know, a, a, a very complicated, um, like elegant painting. There's like a lot going on in there. Oh. It's the Where's Waldo of whiskeys. <laughs> <laughs> if where's waldo was painted by like renoir like <laughs> you know there's like a little comeback in the finish and then it dissipates but like so delicately yeah a little a little delivery of that that nose that you got at the beginning comes out just at the end just I actually think this is a good whiskey to start with because it is because we um i mean it has a like a low you know percentage of, of alcohol content and then like everything out like generally the whiskeys we have on the show since we do a lot of smws's are like pretty you know like yeah <laughs> so this is an, it's you know i think having this later in the lineup is kind of like you, you might lose some of that um some of those delicate notes you know because it is so um, subtle yeah i, I, yeah. I think would be overpowered by something else I mean, definitely, I'm glad we did a warm up before this, but you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. Oh, it looks like uh, the two Ians are doing a banknote to start. Nice. It's nice. their good warm up. That's nice. The dual Ians. It yeah, this is. Up. I just like I don't want to move on to any other whiskeys. I just want to stay right here. <laughs> yeah, I could sit in this nose for a long time. This is just delightful. Have you noticed how it opens up? It's opening up to me more than the first sip. Like, I'm at my third, fourth sip, and now I've got even more, even more flavor, even more development. This is fun. Yeah. I mean, if we're starting with this, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is such a great observation because I just had my second sip, and it's like, it is like you like that first sip. Let me show you a little bit more of what's going on. You can right open now. the door just a little bit wider. Here. Yeah. <laughs> or it's like, let me show you the East Wing. Did you know I had an East Wing? Come over here. I thought the West Wing was just the house. It does develop. Like, I get some more sweet notes, but not like just sugar, like fruit sweetness mm -hmm. coming up. I got strawberry. Yeah. Raisin. What is it with freaking black art? Like it is, it's it's so aptly named because it is like sorcery. Like I do feel like this whiskey <laughs> is sorcery. So Jim McEwen came up with the first black art and he did the, I think one through six or something. And then he retired from Brook Lottie and he on a yellow sticky note on his last day, he had that, handed that off to Adam Hammett. So Adam kind of probably looked at it a little bit, but then he thought, you know, I learned everything I know from Jim McEwen. What he'd want me to do is start over, and he threw it out without recording what it was, and he made up his own recipe for the black arts. So this is, I love that. That's like an improv way. That's like the improviser's way, right? You know, it's like trust that your instincts are are going to get you there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. And you know what, Adam? Sponge of up. Success. I might have to just pour a little bit more of this in here, in here, which I seldom do with the first with the first one. But uh, I'm gonna do it. Oh man, 
and you can the other yeah and it's like i knew we weren't going to science this and i feel like we sh like i have no interest in it because it's it is so delicate you know it's like it doesn't need i don't want to know like it's perfect the way it is oh you know you know i've got the bottle i should probably take a bullet for the team what do you think you're tasting along with us what's your story morning glory um you know this has got to be by far the smoothest whiskey I've ever had. I mean, I also don't know what I expected, you know, with it being 26 years old. But um, it's uh, the nose is really what uh, what sells me on this. this the nose is delightful. Um, the taste for me, the only thing that I got that y'all didn't get is like there's like cracked pepper for me. Like, oh, uh, yeah, 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 I can see that. Like on the back of the palate for me is like some cracked pepper, but. It's Spiciness. it's delightful. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a remarkable drum. Wow. Yeah, I I think it, the fact that it is so smooth, but also has so much character. Because normally, like sometimes, oh God, Andrew, go ahead. It's your you know, it's your whiskey. Um, because like, one, just like, one, just one. A lot of times, like I I don't know, like sometimes a a whiskey that's aged and like is very smooth, will will kind of just be like, yeah, it's good, you know. But this is like so exceptional, you know what I mean? See what he let's see what he says. I think the um the sweetness is pushed aside with the water in the nose. I get a lot more of the kind of underlying grassiness and um, more of the savory notes. Well, that's intriguing to me. Now it did it didn't I mean it didn't change it. It just felt like it just pushed the the sweet notes up to the side. This is a good taste. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think if it changed at all. Um, maybe a little bit more burn in the in the finish, like it's a little less smooth. The, the the alcohol comes forward in the finish, but other than that, I don't think water changed it. So I would say, don't add water. No point. Fascinating. I will say that on the nose, the water made black licorice like jump out for me hmm. like and not even like a knees like literally black licorice like those ropes those, yeah like the the black version of the red ropes mm -hmm. yeah very that's a very controversial candy right the black licorice i like i was as a kid i liked black licorice i don't think i've had it in a long time but i you know i always liked it so i loved it in the all sorts because it was black licorice around a little candy center now, is that a Canadian candy, all sorts? I, I guess so. I don't know. Have you From, guys ever had salmiaki? It's like a Finnish salt. You better ble bleep that fat. Licorice. I don't know what you just said. Salmiaki. <laughs> is it salmiaki? It's a, it's a salted black licorice candy. So it's huh. it's really salty. It, there's no sweetness in that candy. And it's that sounds... very intense black licorice. And I, I would, in I would Finland, be into that. they have that in vodka. They have like flavored vodkas mm -hmm. with that the like everybody is like kind of kind of a rite of passage if you like it then you're fine salmiaki you said yep hmm. that's interesting because there's like a medicine in the game that i'm working on called salmiac i wonder if oh. it's related i bet it is like an ancient medicine that people use like a kind of um right i can imagine licorice being used in medicine yeah this, oh. it's an ancient yeah i used to like i remember when i i used to like chew on licorice roots when i lived in atlanta I can kind of see the licorice in the nose now. I don't know. Can, can you get that without water? I think it's maybe something we weren't identifying. Whew. It's almost time to move on. All right. I don't really get it. I don't really get it without the water either. I mean, it's there if I look for it, but it, um, I mean, it, yeah, it's not something I would, I would, you know, say, I mean, there's a little bit of that in pretty much every whiskey I taste almost, you know, but it's not, I don't know. Mm. I found that this was so well-rounded. You can tell it's aged and somebody took the time to make sure that it was ready to be bottled because there's a finesse in this product. It's really remarkable. I'm really glad we could have this. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, you can taste the, you know, the youngest art whiskey, of the black art. Youngest whiskey is 26, right? That's that's what we have to understand. Like this could have some, you know, 29 year old, 30 year old casks in there. We just we just don't know. They can't advertise it. Um, well, as as much as I hate to leave that whiskey, there's more whiskeys to taste, and whiskeys we must taste them. Down. A well perfumed we brute. Here, this is uh, 36.152. This is from Ben Rennies. Ben, a Ben is a mountain in Scotland. And this Scot this mountain is called Ruben. This is great. I, well, well you, you see like Ben well, Romack and Ben Rennies and- Right. Oh, yeah, I, I never, this, is, this, is, this is a candy store whiskey. What oh, I would call a candy store whiskey. This oh. is so much fun. Oh, there's no yeah. salt, there's no subtlety. <laughs> It's like this, you talk about carnival, this is like the 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 candy store in the carnival. Like this is like- This is candy <laughs> butter popcorn. This, this vat, this this is the vat of the melting Ooh, butter and- This is so nice. Is that, a, is that a jump, 45 to 58? I guess it is, yeah. It's but a bit of a jump. It's, it's a, a jump, jump, yeah. Oh, wow, oh, this, this nose is delightful. It's, it is so fun. Okay, wow. I don't think I've ever had a nose like this in a whiskey before. I think I've had similar, but this is this is really That's there. It. Like you don't even have to get very close to get this full force. A well-perfumed oh, wee brute. Interesting. Yeah, so interesting. The well perfumed, uh, I think we're getting right off the top here. And the wig oh, okay. might be 58.9. So you guys are matching us in the ABV. Do we know wow. what cast has aged in? Uh, this Oloroso? is a first fill Oloroso butt. I'm getting Home Depot vibes. <laughs> like, but if, yeah, but if like you, the smell of Home Depot. But if you went to the Home Depot where the witch from Hansel and Gretel <laughs> yes. shopped before she made her house, like, it, yeah. I'll take a, I'll take a three yards of gingerbread and uh, yeah. cut me off some of that. Yeah. What is, what is this? If, a gumdrop nail there gun? Was a yeah, I'm taking it. Section at, at, um, but yeah, you're, you're at the back where they'll do the cuts for you. For a dollar yes. a cut, and and the gingerbread has been cut there, and there's gingerbread sawdust on the floor. That's yep. that's where you're that's where you're finding yourself. Yeah. But it's like the best. It's like the best store ever. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, definitely like fresh cut wood in here for sure. Wow, I love that. You, there's oh. so much you can do, like so much paint. splashing around you can do in a nose before you even get to taste it. That is so. That like the really good SMWSs. I feel like that's that often happens. <laughs> gingerbread sawdust. <laughs> gingerbread sawdust for you here. You want some gumdrop nails? <laughs> if only Home Depot had kettle corn. I'm sure there's a Home Depot out there somewhere that does have kettle corn. So, they do oh, have Andrew's candy tasting it. I guess we should taste it. Yeah. What's what's that, Marie? They do have candy at the cash register. Mm -hmm. Or a Fuddruckers. Many of them have a Fuddruckers. Oh my God! It's my favorite whiskey. Let's go. Whiskey again. <laughs> Okay, oh now what, what did I, I fucking love whiskey? <laughs> this is good. This is so good. This is. Oh, wow. I this, I'm going to remember this one. Like, yes. For a long time. Yeah, that nose was amazing, but the first sip was astronomical. Like, that was so good. It was so good. I don't even know what I'm tasting. Like I have to go back for another sip to kind of go, what was that? What just happened to me? Yeah, it's like a clown punched me in the face with a with a with a fist of of the most delicious candies possible. Like but more. Hopefully it's not Pennywise. It's not. It's, it's not. <laughs> I mean, but I would, if this was the flavor of Pennywise, I would definitely go with Pennywise. <laughs> if we all float down here meant we were floating in this, I would, I would float down there. Okay, some sort of um, like tangerine butter in the taste. Um, um, yeah, there, there is like a buttery citrus, which normally you'd be like buttery citrus, but it's like, it's awesome. It's... Yeah, it's not like the other. It's not like the buttery citrus that we found in other whiskeys either. This is this is its own unique kind of strata. Um, 
This oh. is a candied lemon peel or candied orange peel with like in the like you said it like in a gingerbread cookie sometimes uh -huh. you add candied peels kind of feels like that mm -hmm. yeah i can see that i mean this wow. this takes me back to my mom zesting lemons to make something in the kitchen like a pie or or something like that it's, you know it's that aroma in there of, of something kind of flowery and doughy and, and something citrusy in the air oh definitely a pastry with like a fruit inside of it like a citrus fruit of some sort like you know orange and lemon or like a you know i yeah like if this was a house like the house itself would be a pie it would be like that the house would be a pie with like little tarts inside of the house like <laughs> little tarts inside the house it'd be a pie pies within a pie it'd be like meta pie time meta pie time oh boy oh Damn, that's good uh, welcome well to perfumed we brute. Sorry, <laughs> I was just saying hello to Jimmy P in the uh, in the chat. Jimmy P twenty three. Uh, there's so much fun imagery in these descriptions. I mean, that's that's really all we're doing the show for. Honestly, otherwise, there's no reason to watch the show. We we fucking love whiskey and we fucking love metaphors. That's that's the subtext right there. Say this is my favorite i haven't yeah. had the other ones but like can i say this is my favorite absolutely yeah. you can say that as much as you want yeah. <laughs> like, you know. like i'm i'm taken somewhere else this is yeah. taking me somewhere else yeah yeah in my head i mean it, it smell and taste they're nostalgic like this is this is take me back to mom's kitchen when you know it's mother's day tomorrow um yeah. my mom passed away last year love you mom miss love you, you. <laughs> yeah i mean i'm gonna say like i think like a couple weeks ago we had a whiskey that was like unfinished dad projects this is like <laughs> ultimate grandma or mom projects that they finished every day perfectly and you know you didn't appreciate Ever. it until later right <laughs> like i just realized what this re reminds me Yes. My, my grandmother on my mom's side, she makes cookies. And when she makes cookies, she adds more butter than flour. And what it makes them is thinner and crispier and just soft in the middle, like chewy, very chewy in the middle. And she sometimes puts um, orange peel and chocolate chips or she puts raisins. And it reminds me of that. It reminds me of a chewy, that, that's buttery, what... like freshly baked. And I think I think this is the cookie with the raisins, not the chocolate chips. Darth brunch. This is I don't know. Me, this is taking me in my grandmother's kitchen. Yeah, yeah that's where it's. Located. It's a kitchen whiskey. I think I think we have yeah. to. Yeah, and I love being in the kitchen. Like some people like say that as an insult to people. Like go back to the kitchen. I'm like, yeah, I'm very happy to be in the kitchen. I I love that's cooking. My, that's my happy place. Yeah, I have I like have a, I got a callus last year for some reason. Like I have a callus on my on my finger from cutting from you know because I've been cooking so much during the pandemic. But I love cooking, so you know. You oh, fucking yeah. love cooking. I, I would say that. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I like to I like to cook. My dad was you know, my dad was uh, did a lot of cooking in that in the house. Probably most of the cooking. He, he was like a chef. Uh, well, as much as you can use the term chef, he was a chef in the navy. Yeah, he was a cook in the navy, really. Like how much if you're cooking for like you know a uh, hundred dudes, like how how much you know, of a chef are you? But um, but yeah, I, I love to cook. Yeah, you need creativity oh. to be able to cook for a large number of people in a reasonable amount of time and still That's make true. it good to yeah, have with people motivated. Probably limited. Yeah, I don't want to disparage actually, people who cook for like a hundred people. I don't want because it is it is yeah. a skill set. Yeah. Plus, you probably had constraints like budget constraints and food constraints. So no, I admire that. Yeah. If he created the menu from the ingredients, he was a chef. Fair enough, Thad. And I know that's you now. I know. <laughs> Thad, what do you think of this? What do you think of this uh, of this well-perfumed weed brute? It is awesome. The nose is amazing. It is beautiful. It makes me want to actually go out to the store and just go buy some, like, chocolate peanut butter, like, wafers or something, right? And then just enjoy them. Uh, yeah. Taste-wise, it's it's interesting. Um, 
I totally get the, the, the citrus and buttery and pastry, um, but there's something else there that I can't really put there. And, and, and I totally get why they have the brute in there, because it, it, it is very tingly on the tongue. It's very lively, and it jumps around. So I, I, I totally get that. I might suggest water. I, I you think put water? I like Did you science water. it? Yeah, I sciencedst it. Um, okay. uh, a lot more kind of oaky notes in the taste. Um, and the nose, I think, clarifies itself. And I, I think, you, Dad, you might be able to get to what that flavor is. I can't tell you what it is because I'll give it a try. The it's name reminds me of Wee Beastie, but. Right. Oh, yeah, that does open up a bit in the nose. It's still perplexing to me. Like I love every flavor in my mouth and I can't, I did it is. There's a bit more tang in the nose. Like there's something tangy in there. Something funky now with the water in a good way. Like, oh man, what is that? Like almost like a sauerkraut or like a, I do love sauerkraut. I mean, sauerkraut's good, but I fucking love whiskey. Sauerkraut is a really good entry project, like entry level project for homemade fermentation. Mm -hmm. If you like to do lacto fermentation, sauerkraut is usually like one of the first things that people are told to make because it's yeah. just salt and cabbage and you let it do its thing for a 10 days, 20 days until it's sour enough and then you put it in the fridge. It's good. I think I might make some sauerkraut. Like I have some cabbage in my refrigerator and I've never made it. I think I'm going to make some. Yeah. You've inspired you just have me. to massage it with your hands really well so the salt extracts the water from the cabbage and then it makes enough water naturally to cover the cabbage and then you leave it on the counter for 10 days um with a you know if you have a lid you burp it every day so that it doesn't make too much gas mm -hmm. and then you put it in the fridge after 20 uh, days it should be sour i'm gonna try it yeah marisa Le, what got you into fermentation uh it's kimchi I really like kimchi and on YouTube there's this uh, it's like the Korean mom of the internet her name is Mangchi and she makes Korean dishes and I really really like that cuisine and she a lot of pickling for, oh yeah a lot of pickling yeah. a lot of fermentation so she made kimchi and I was like you know what I'm gonna try it and uh, it's easy it's like it's just fun because you see the change of state from like a fresh vegetable to something that becomes sour, but just so delicious. Like it's delicious fresh and it's delicious fermented. So it's it's like an introduction to the world of fermentation. And from that, I started making like kombucha and like- Wow. You know, all sorts of fermented, I made uh, ginger beer. I made apple cider, hard cider. I made a bunch of fermented things because it's so so nice and darth brunch and i this year we are buying young walnuts from a farm in northern california and we're going to make this italian walnut wine that's called nocino what and it has to age so we're going to receive the walnuts sometime in beginning of june and then we have to let it age in vodka for like minimum of six months ideally one year but you have to age it for that long and like we're hoping that around the holiday time we're gonna uh, yeah, she, yeah, yeah um i i would like to taste it uh when it's available because that yes, sounds please. awesome absolutely yeah. I'm, making on the big, list. I'm making a big joke i bought a huge glass container to make that and then we're gonna we're gonna taste it around the holiday season fantastic we have an That's episode called i fucking love walnut wine <laughs> I think the only I thing I pickled is is eggs. Like I pickle eggs. It's something my my dad used to do. But I will I will pickle eggs. Um, you know sorry what? if I'm distracted. Right now my cat is on the windowsill and he knows he's not allowed on the desk, but he's doing that thing where it's like, what if I put my paw on the desk? <laughs> you know, he's on trying the escape to. Button. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to. Oh, my paw's on the desk though, so can't the rest of me go on the desk? So I'm just kind of. You know, you're you're making these arbitrary lines here. I I can be on the desk. Hey, um, I'm super uh, excited by that last one we have, but I'm also super excited uh, by this next one. Heat this fire called... in a storm. Holy. Storm. 
Oh, we never wait. We never read the the tasting notes from oh. the last one. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Do you have them? Do you wanna do you wanna give it a go? I, I can read them. Uh, you, you emailed them to me, right? Yes. All right. Here we go. Um. And I guess these are just in order, correct? Yes, they should be. So that was uh, uh thirty six dot one five two. Okay. A garden scented. Oh, here, here we go. A garden scented perfume noted the panel at first, followed by jasmine tea beef stock cubes, bay leaf, and a good quality BSOP Armagnac. The sense of old wood on a hot day. Water gives up warm cinnamon, an unstuck matchstick, and a sweet and savory balance like a rich cranberry gravy. The green and floral scent lingers in the background, like daffodils in, bloom, in full bloom. In the mouth, it arrives cleanly with a syrupy texture and flavors of Madeira wine, dunnage, and rose water. A heady, intoxicating, and dense tram. A touch of water, and it reveals licorice, burnt orange cake, and drying lychee aspect. Or lychee, lychee, lychee. Sorry, I was distracted by a cat. That was wonderful. <laughs> I used my NPR voice. <clears throat> yep. In the chat, they're all about the ASMR. They're all loving it. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm pretty sure Brooke Lassie has this one because it's a Buna Habe. Like, who would not buy Pete in a Firestorm from SMWS? As soon as you saw that, without that tasting name, it, you have to get that, right? Knowing anything, you would buy that. It's a six-year-old uh, Buna Haben. It's uh, been aged in a uh, ex-bourbon cask for four years and then finished in a second film Moscatel Hogshead. Moscatel, is that a sherry? What is Moscatel? It's Moscatel a is uh, one of the three musketeers, isn't it? Or is it a port? No, no, no that would be Portos, Aramis. Brooke Lassie, if you don't have this, then you're really not a Buna Haven fan. I don't know. I don't know how to tell you that. Stop throwing shade on our on our, our chat guests. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying that's not the way to keep guests? Oh my god. Oh boy. Oh my god. <laughs> my favorite oh my god. Guys, just keep doing the show. I'll be over here for a minute. Oh my god. This is my favorite whiskey. Oh my god. This is my favorite whiskey. Holy shit. This is like if you're heading towards the elemental plane of fire and you're going down the chimney that leads to the elemental plane of fire, flying through all the smoke. That's what this is. Drew, Drew left the chat. <laughs> I mean, so did I. Like, I mean, he physically left, but I'm somewhere else. <laughs> oh oh my God. You know what I thought about the first thing that came to my mind? Is my grandfather on my dad's side, grandfather's garage. Because he, he was a, um, a welder. And sometimes he does some work on cars or my parents' cars when they change the tires. And like, sometimes I get on in the garage to you know, get stuff from the fridge or whatever. And it reminds me of that room. It's like- Yeah, this, it smells dust. like burning metal. Yeah, it's it's like a forge. Yeah, like all these rags and- yeah. Obviously campfire, obviously smoke, but this is like, yeah, if you, you're driving your car and you hear that grinding sound and then you smell that <laughs> smell of like, oh, I've- no, That was I'm, a transmission. I'm, I'm burning yeah. the metal, the metal is burning. Yeah. You you're on your transmission point. dust yeah. <laughs> or or it's like if you walk into a um like a pet boys or like a car store and there, this is like rubber tires and like rubber tires like, yes 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 that smell of you like oh this, it's yeah rubber brand tires. <sighs> yeah of course there's an ifrit you know it's outside of the elemental plane of fire I'm... yeah it's not it's it, this isn't the elemental plane of fire but it's on the way there it's like the the road that leads there my knees have gone. I can't stand. Oh my god, this is good. I haven't even tasted this yet, and it's like I don't want to. Don't don't faint, Andrew, please. You need to be able to taste it. <sighs> oh, I mean, we we will taste it. I just. Uh, I think we're gonna keep this. She's uh, she's giving tasting notes right now. Some sauerkraut juice. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't know if I oh my get god. the sauerkraut juice. Oh my god. Someone else is going to have to uh, science I get, this. I get like dry, 
dry soil that's come that's becoming a little dusty and when you roll on it let's say your your car is parking on the dry ground outside and you've got tires and then you've got a bit of that dry soil and, and this house is a junkyard enough. or it is a it is a pet boys it is a it is a like a tire store you know it is a maybe it's a tire it's a tire store of brand new tires but right outside there's a junkyard of like like a cool junkyard like you see in like tv shows or movies where a bunch of a bunch of kids build a spaceship out of the parts in the, in the junkyard like that that sort of junkyard like a cool junkyard uh th this is nostalgic for me this is this is my grandfather's garage where he lived in montreal and uh had uh, a cadillac um he was vice he was vice president of snap-on tools something like that anyways um he had this cadillac nice. And you'd go into the garage and he had his winter tires up on the wall and so he had like so many tires in that garage and the oil on the on the pavement and it's just i'm, yeah. I'm right back there the oil the oil on the ground somebody's working on a car somewhere yeah got a dirty oh. rag that this is for like sure a working garage there. this is a garage where people are they're, they're like working but it's got like it's got like your favorite vintage car yeah I want to differentiate it because like a couple of weeks ago, we had that, that smell of a dad's garage where he had, he had abandoned the project. This is not that. This is a garage where cars are being cycled through and there's fresh tires on the wall. And, in and, yeah. and it could be a vintage car, but like people are working every day in this garage. And there might be a coal fired stove in the corner. that's just like got a pot of coffee on it for everybody. This nose is so good. Like this, this so far today has been freaking stellar. This, like this... I, I I can't I've never had to walk away. I never had to walk away after smelling a whiskey. Oh my god. Wow. Wow, this is a good place. Yeah. Oh. What do you think, Thad? Yeah. So I don't do this often, but I will say this is my favorite whiskey. Um I'm horribly biased because I am a huge peat head and this I, for some reason I'm still out of Ard Ardbeg Ugadal. For some reason. What? Um me I know, too. Like, I know. I'm, and I keep thinking to myself, like, I've got, why have I not gotten some more Ugadol? Like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> I, I still haven't even tasted this. I'm still just nosing it. Uh, it's yeah. phenomenal. It's fantastic. Um, and I'm trying to remember if I actually willingly turned down a bottle of this or if this came up during one of my hiatuses of buying whiskey because I have no more storage for whiskey. <laughs> More yes. shelves can be built. I don't understand what you just said. <laughs> this reminds me of the very first time I had Laphroaig. Like that was that was kind of what opened my whiskey mind. Is like that the very first time I had it. I was like, holy, holy balls! And now Maria's tasted it. I tasted it because I could. Like, just my brain was like, you have to do it. I didn't even wait. I'm sorry, I didn't. Yeah, wait. no, was really, no, that's but do what your brain says. My brain exploded. Like my brain just exploded. I, all right this is so good this is this is crazy good this is so good <laughs> um it's all it, the finish is, is gonna last <laughs> oh my god the, the finish is miles long it is it miles is, long. I, so that was like 30, 45 seconds ago I tasted it. Still tasting it like I just did. Yeah. That's like aliens came by and they fired a, a, a beam out of their, their spaceship and the entire, the entire island of Isla, they, they, they took the essence of it and burned it and put it into this. That's, that's what this is. I mean, essentially. Okay. Oh God, this that is took good. me from my granddad's garage to the cottage my parents have a cottage and there's a, a moulin, how do you it's like a shack in the back where we put all the garden stuff shack and, in the back a shack in the back where we put all the stuff including the lawnmower and some of sometimes some wood for the fire and then some cut grass just the garden tools and i and the, the gas tank for the lawnmower, like, I get that. I, it's, and like, my grandparents' places, either the cottage used to be their primary home, but like, my grandparents moved 
closer to family and then the cottage became a cottage and like it's like my two favorite places on earth my grandparents house and like this is a happy place right now yeah. this is yeah the this best. Is. like this is making me so happy <laughs> it's so good yeah i think i okay. cried a little bit tasting this uh this is this is really good Brooke Lassie says uh, that she's getting hints of lime, Jolly Rancher, and Big Red Chewing Gum on the nose. I, I can see the Big Red Chewing Gum. I'm not sure the, the lime Jolly Rancher, but she's got a yeah. much palate than I do. I lime, say, that's a rare flavor of Jolly Rancher. Like, you hardly have to get a lime one. Like, I take a green one, and I'm always hoping it's going to be lime, and then it's green apple, and I'm disappointed. But I, I might have had a lime, a lime Jolly lime. Rancher once. Like for me, it's always the green ones are all apple. Like that's right. in my childhood. Like I've had one like once, I think. I think I've only eaten Jolly Ranchers once. I have no idea what flavors. Oh my they god, are. Andrew! I don't, I don't want to move away from this. From the nose? No. I don't want to move away from this whiskey. Okay. Yeah. Not the best whiskey. That's the end of the show, everyone. I fucking love whiskey. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Get one more, but no, we're not going to have it. They're not going to taste it. Yeah, this is such a freaking high point. I think it reminds me of um, like I like I I think it was I don't know it was several, many episodes ago we did um, a date with a tart and I I remember that one as being amazing. I like this better. Like this like I keep saying something's my favorite whiskey, but this is like this is my favorite whiskey. Incredible. It's, it's so incredible. good. It's incredible. This is, this is phenomenal. I'm being spoiled rotten right oh, you now poor thing. by you guys. I'm. So uh, so lucky. Blame random.org. Not blame. You got Thanks. your random. Are you wait? Are you sciencing it? Andrew's gonna science, science it. it. Gonna science I don't think it'll hurt it. Like this is this seems pretty robust to me. I think I think it's gonna do some interesting stuff. But I'll wait. Oh no! Oh no! no, no Lassie no, just no. said she scienced it. And it's horrible. No! I just did it. Sixteen red dots. I'm That's like sorry. some inside Second too late, Brooke Lassie. A second too late. Um, the, it, I don't think it kills the nose. It, it, the the big red chewing gum, the cinnamon, that comes to the fore. Oh, oh! It's even better on the third sip. It's giving me more. It the, oh, it destroys the palate. It just. Oh, it no. just runs ravage through the palate. It's so boring. I'm with I'm with Brooke Lassie. Yeah, don't science it. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I didn't have much left, so that's okay. I mean, you have a whole bottle left. Yeah, but I didn't have much left in my glass, so it's not like a two sips. Oh. Yeah. When the point arrives where I'm gonna come and hang out at your house, Andrew, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask if I can have a glass. A little bit, a little dram of this, I think. If you don't have it locked in a vault underground. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have enough vault space. I've got too many favorite whiskeys. <laughs> oh, you know what time it is? This might be time to move on to the next one. No, no, we have two minutes left here. Okay, oh yes, we have to yeah. read the description as well. Uh, yes. Yeah, yes, you yes. read the description this time. Let me hear your All right. NPR voice. We should we should have Marie read the description if she wants to. We should. Oh, I don't do it. have them. Do I have them? Just, just moment, if you're going to in a moment. I'm, I'll text it over to you, or I'll put it. I'll put it in the um, in the Zoom chat. The Zoom? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, she has an accent, so it'll be like you know international. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it'll be so much better. Yeah. Oh, I hope I pronounce all the words okay. Like, I'm still. I still. Okay, just it's like been... I did. Yeah, we we all have problems, especially when they have these British words in there. So like, I said lychee, and I know it's lychee. Like what? Anyway, I don't think that's. I think that's still like arguably okay to say. Lychee, Either way, lychee, it's, lychee. It's so commonly used. I don't think it's a problem. Yeah. Did you like did you just post that, Andrew? Was yeah, it's in the a... it's in the Zoom chat. Okay. Imagine lighting a fire, a peat fire on the beach in glorious sunshine, then out of nowhere, dark stormy clouds that indicate an arriving thunderstorm fill the sky. On the palette, the first flash of lightning, powerful and menacing, like cold dressed with vinegar and Dijon mustard. With the addition of water, a sweeter side surprises us, and we find a mojito cocktail with a dash of Lapsang Sochong tea, while the palate has carried berries, dark sweet cherries, and macadamia nut oil. 
most unusual, but certainly enjoyable. That's funny because, yeah, it kind of differs from what you guys were saying. Anyways, um, finishing. Um, after four years in an ex-bourbon hogshead, we transferred this whiskey into a second film, Mocatel Hogshead. There's the well, Mocatel again. What is Mocatel? I feel like we should know. Uh, we should probably Google that. that There's someone in the chat might. Do we have a, a sciencey person who can tell us? Um, Mocatel in chat should be. I think it's. Fine smoke cured tea is the uh, Lapsang Sochong. Yeah. Yes, Ian would know that. He's very good about that. Oh my also, god, this nose, you guys. Fermented. This yeah. nose. This nose is like, I, this is above and beyond any nose I've had ever. Like, the taste is great, but man. Well, there's Moscatel. Oh, cherry. is Marie. In the description, it was written. It, it says Moscatel. I, I agree, but oh, there's a Moscatel, but I don't, I can't, Google's not showing anything for Moscatel except for like technology companies. Hmm. It's Moscatel. Is it? Okay. So that's just a typo in the. Uh... Oh. Yeah, it says Moscatel down lower. Yeah, in the cask type. Yeah, so yeah, it's a Moscatel. So that's just a typo. So I guess whoever was typing this in had just had a tasting. Yeah, because I mean that just blew my socks off. That blew my typing fingers away. <laughs> oh look, I'm Maria is frozen for me. Uh oh, is she frozen for anyone else? Yes. Yeah, my internet is a little rushing right now for I'm some stable. reason. Oh, I'm sorry about that. How dare you! <laughs> How dare you? How dare you buffer? Come on! Oh, but we can still hear you. So that's actually. That's, yeah. oof, okay. Yeah. I'm seeing well, a spinning wheel. Hopefully, it's not going to kill my Zoom. Yeah. Well, how dare you live in America where the internet is <laughs> it's flaky? No good. Mm -hmm. um, I almost lost it. Okay, still here. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to introduce the next whiskey, and then yeah, hopefully. Okay, okay, let me. Okay, I'm going to put this back on it. <gasps> Guys, we're so good. We love to hear people fighting with their internet, but let's go into this last one. Look at the color! Look at the color! It's this is to the power of four. This is a uh, lost I, my page because I was googling Muscatel. Uh, Glen Rhodes, Glen Rhodes. They they do a very sweet, smooth, wonderful whiskey, but the color is amazing. This is a first fill sherry butt that it came from, so just tremendous color. And I guess we're going to get, you know, something sweet and cherry full in the nose, but you never know. You never know. Um, full disclosure, Andrew, I have tasted this whiskey. Did you? Yeah, you, when I, you opened I, it, you had to? I tasted it when, when it was house sitting. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And, and, I, and, every, and when I did, I was, I was thinking of the Fantastic Four. Wait, let's see. Is Marie, are you still there? Can we hear you? Yes. Okay. All right. I worked on the last uh, rendition of the Fantastic Four movie. That was funny. Oh, that was one of my first full feature projects. Um, I, um, yeah, I, I'm kind of looking forward to the, the new Fantastic Four movie. Me too, because the one I worked on was horrible. Yeah, they tried to bury it. They, they really bad. Really it. Well, there was the, the really bad one where they were just holding on to, I think it was, was it Roger Corman? Someone was like holding on to the, the contract, like the, the property. And then there was the one with, um, yeah, that was, you know, not that great, but. Uh, Marisa Lay, the only saving grace oh to being frozen is that it, you froze on a on a frame that's not terrible. It wasn't one. Of You're very. It's very flattering. Yeah, am it is I a flattering. Froze, am I still frozen? Because I, yeah. I I see myself not frozen, but for you guys, I'm still frozen. Yeah, yeah. It was still... Roger Corman. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Yeah, Corman. This is like this. This is so clean. This is like a. This is like a a, a breeze off of um like the the ocean. Like it is just a clean. Oh my God, like linen, like clean, fresh, white washed linen, like just off of the ocean. And you're like standing on a, on a, on a cliff or near the beach. Like, but there's a, there's a little bit of the seaweed on the beach too. That like with the bulbs on it and you're getting kind of that, <clears throat> that, that little bit of sea funk on it. Oh my God. Yeah. And this, like, this is the second time I've tasted this, but I have never, I don't know what the tasting notes are. So that's going to be quite interesting. Oh my God. That smells like. Ogun quit in Maine. Is that a place? Yes. <laughs> it is. It's 
a it's a town um in maine where like it seems like half of the population of quebec goes in the summer because you try to go to the states to see something different and you end up just being surrounded by quebecers and you're like oh okay yeah i am um, yeah, guys it reminds me this reminds me of there's a there's a tv show a british tv show called pull dark where like the cast is beautiful and the setting is beautiful it's really just like super eye candy but like all of everything happens on these cliffs over the i forget where it is it's a place like in northern england where they film it but like these these the everything like and there's like the the wind is in the their hair is in the wind and it's like the the cliffs and the ocean like it's so beautiful like that's what this smell reminds me of pole dark Boom! Did you taste it? I, 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 yeah, he tasted it. I, I'm just nosing it. I'm saying there's like cherry, cherry Jolly Ranchers in here in the in the nose, but it's my favorite whiskey. It, it is. Whoa! Oh, for a fourth time today. And <laughs> yeah, all four, all four have been my favorite whiskey. Marisa, yeah, he's not wrong. Stop your video and restart it. I don't know because they're still frozen for us. Yeah, my Zoom seems like it's gonna crash. That that will be unhappy because the stream will get all messed up. But I think I think it'll we'll cause some issues. But he can sort it. He's technically apt. I know Thad is very technically. I'm technically apt, but I've been drinking whiskey all day. <laughs> <laughs> You're more technically apt. Like it, that just improves your your ability to you know write code and whatnot. This, right? the, if this whiskey doesn't make you do better, I don't I don't know what will. This is this this is my favorite whiskey for sure. This Holy yeah. Crap, this is good. Like I have to say, like the Bunahaben, like the the Pete and a Firestorm, that was my favorite in this lineup. Like that, that was just exceptional. But this man, is this this is like a this is a red letter day. Like all of these, like if you could have a perfect show as far as like the tasting of the whiskeys, um, and as far as the guests, like this was a perfect show. Yeah, mm. it's just too bad about the oh, video. Yeah. You try and start and stop, Marie Soleil. Uh, I can't because it's grayed out. It's gonna ask me to completely leave. Oh. Well, may, maybe you need to leave and come back. Yeah, we'll maybe sort it out. We got shot, like eight minutes shot. left in the show, okay. so. Okay, let me try that. And, and I don't think there's another show after us tonight, so we can go a little long. All yeah. right. Okay, I hope it's going to work. Let me come back. Matt and Paul, don't panic. Just a little long. Yeah, there might be some technical difficulties. Yeah, we'll see half faces. Oh, my God. Well, what is oh. that? It's like, it's like, um, it's like the most magical um, uh, snow cone juice in the world. Or, yeah, like, but I it, say snow cone juice because that sounds kind of trashy, but it's like if snow cone juice came out of, like, if God made snow cone juice or, or you drank it out of the Holy Grail, you know? And, and put it into a um, uh, some sort of uh, oak cone. Like, the, yeah, the, the, the an oak cone. There, the fresh shaved planks. Okay, we this have, is like a, it's like a, this, if I made this, oh yeah, we're all, we're all yeah. unsorted now. Two Marie Soleil's in the, in the chat now. Oh, you can never have an, you can never have too many Marie Soleil's, in my opinion. No. Oh, there's the other one gone. Okay. Now, uh, Thad will do his magic. <laughs> yeah, because right now, uh, you are Joseph Limbaugh, and I, yeah. Yeah, he's moving, he's moving <laughs> us around. I, I am it. so sorry. Uh, my oh, hey, not your fault. Um, not your fault. Technology. Yeah. You, you don't have to apologize for the internet because it turns out the internet has no guarantees. That's one of the things I love about it is like, hey, the way the internet works is, you know, we'll send some packets. They might get there or not, but there's literally no guarantees at all that it will ever work. Like it's we'll do our best. Yeah, we'll do, do our best. I do work from a tablet. Sometimes my memory is a little limited. Uh, glad to have you back up and moving. Thank you. <sighs> Fuck, I love whiskey. Yeah, yeah. this is, this is so such good. a clean, fresh, delightful. Anybody like, getting... like if there was a morning whiskey, I would say this is a morning whiskey. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, what was who was our guest that was like, you should taste it in the morning? Like, didn't we have someone? Um, yes, yes, yes. yes it somebody was, said uh, maybe it wasn't a guest. Maybe it was that wasn't a guest. Tasting. Wasn't it last? It was a test team. It wasn't a guest. It was it was a tasting. We were at. Oh, that's right. Uh, um, yeah. I'm gonna throw this out. Um, Grape flavored flavored turpentine is what I get off of the nose. Nice. That's a good one. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I think it's the first time I've ever been like, grape is delicious <laughs> in my entire life. Ian Ian Ox? Ian an Ian Ox? Shouldn't it be Ian Anox? 
I'm not saying it right. Whiskey, I fucking love thee. Maybe it's Ian. A uh, ox. Ian Ox. A O X. I see. Uh, that makes sense. No, I don't still know what you mean. Uh, a Ian A O X. A O X. I st I st it just makes me it makes me so delighted that is keeping a I fucking love whiskey score for the chat. I just it just makes <laughs> time. Uh, oh, there's some like great poetry happening in the chat. Um, oh, I had but this this time. whiskey, I mean, just oh my god, the color. The color is beautiful. And it's not it's, there's no burnt sugar in here. There's no coloring this is just the color of the cask <clears throat> glenn ross should be space side yeah look at it in the map yep space side. yeah space side it's confirmed in. yeah i don't know that i've had a glenn ross before i mean maybe if it was an smws but i don't think i've had one uh you i don't have oh, i guess i have because i had this before at your house <laughs> yes well yeah but you've had that but i mean this this is so well. They have some very dark Glen rods they sell. So uh, maybe you can get something like this directly from the distillery. Oh my God, this is really good. So back when I was married, I I did get a, a bottle of Glen rods, a, a distiller's edition, and it was so smooth. It was so smooth that my wife at the time was like, "Oh, I can drink this whiskey," and I was like, "I'm never buying this whiskey again. You're not drinking my whiskey." <laughs> And this is really rude of me. You are not with her anymore. And now I'm divorced, yeah. so I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know if that was directly. Yeah. That's kind of a red flag. Yeah. Not for you, but for her. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Not for you, but mm. for her. I didn't. I didn't mean that like that. Because you know, usually she'd try it and she would hate everything I, I was having. So I was like, good, okay, it didn't work for me. Oh wow. I, I can feel the ABV in there, but not in an aggressive manner. No, for 64.5, no. I know it's there, yeah. but it has not taken my breath away in a way that an aggressive one would do. I feel like nothing we had today really, like, I didn't really get that that punch or that burn of alcohol in, in anything we had today. No, it, it, nothing's been overwhelming. Um, I, I would say, yes, there's wood stain in, in the palate, but I think you're also eating the wood. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think it's the entire, you're just having a board. <laughs> mm, mm. Yeah. We've had four extremely well balanced, well made. It's like what? what I like the most about things like whiskey or other liquors like that, or, or I should say, like uh, spirits, is that the craft shows, like the art of making a whiskey, or you know, sometimes you can compare that with rums or whatever it shows that somebody spent a lot of time on it and it shows that it's somebody with expertise because it's delicate it's complex you've got like depth of flavor like it opens up it's so great and i yeah. wasn't it, it's crazy because two years ago you would have asked me like what do you think about whiskey i would have been like yeah that's fine <laughs> and thanks to my workplace now it's like the opposite i'm like amazing i want to have them all like this is just like so much fun each one of these has been a different experience and every time we come to a whiskey it's a different experience i mean this is this is what this is why i fucking love whiskey it, it just it, the flavor range is so wide what they're doing and like you said you can you can experience the craft of the the thing they're, they're doing like every little step of the process matters what's the shape of the still they are so superstitious. Like if there's a dent in the copper in a still and they have to replace that piece of the, of the still, they'll put a dent in the new piece of copper they put in. Like they, that, it's so important. Like how it's cooled, how quickly it's cooled, how long the worm tube is in the worm tub. Worm like, tub. Thanks. Worm tub, love it. Um, <laughs> you know, how they, how they dry the malt. Like everything matters in these steps. And it's just like very, very taking care, taking care, taking care, choosing the right casks to put it in. And then just picking at the right time. Yeah, I feel like whiskey is like a fractal pattern where it's like these tiny decisions you make. Like the chaos theory factors large in whiskey. Like the tiny decisions you make, you know, early on, like are extrapolated into the, you know, into the flavors later. Like that's one of the mm -hmm. great things about it. Like it's, yeah, that's why I could just like fall into it forever. Like it's, it is a, an expanding fractal pattern, you know? And, and, you know, I, Ian goes into this a lot. 
uh, Lieutenant Bodie Cooper um, talking about uh, you know the 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 care that the Japanese take and like making the rice for the sushi or or the Chinese making the tea and 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 doing these very specific prescribed things and and it it is all these places in the world where people take this very special care in making this product and they're just of course they become super popular because it's it's, it's amazing what happens when where if I tried to do any of the things that that make this I could not I can't no there I wouldn't be no hope. So I appreciate Thanks. everyone who makes whiskey. Mm. Recently, is there anything else we should know about you? Um, you're, you're from Quebec, as am I originally, uh, although I do not speak French in anywhere. Uh, I, I was an English born speaker and we moved out um, just before the FLT. Je m'appelle Joseph, avec la pomme du terre. <laughs> Je suis l'autobus. I only said this thing to make you laugh. I took two years of French in like in high school, so. It's very good. You know, it's better than a lot of people in Montreal. I'm kidding. No, I don't. I don't think you're wrong. I I, I remember the Anglais in, in in. I think it's better maybe than one person in Montreal, but I don't know if a lot of people. It, um, what can I say? Uh, I, I am a person who likes to appreciate craftsmanship, whether it's in food or drinks. And whiskey is one of those new things. Well, for me, it's new. It was not new for a bunch of people, but for me, it was new. It's like another art that you get to discover and appreciate. And I just, I just love to like dive in it, just explore it. Like my brother-in-law is a sommelier and he loves wine. And my dad is also a huge wine lover i'm i'm slowly but surely getting him in the whiskey world thanks to all my my beautiful friends who have done the same to me but like uh they appreciate the art of making wine as well and the terroir and all all the methods that were transmitted through centuries right and like even with my parents i did a trip to france when i was younger like 10 years ago and we it was a wine trip we went to winery after winery after winery. We had a bed and breakfast that was in a village where everybody was contributing to the same wine, like a village wine. And it happens a lot in France. They do that because they, they can have a bigger batch. They combine everybody's right. production into one wine and it makes like the village wine. It was awesome. And I just got to learn about craftsmanship for wine on that trip. And now I feel like I'm learning about craftsmanship for whiskey and it's like a, a culture right you're learning about culture through food or f through drinks and it's so interesting and mm -hmm. i find that like the more you know about people the more you can appreciate uh their situation and what they do as a living so for me it's like i feel like i'm enriching my brain with knowledge when i when i do things like that so i'm, I'm really thankful I, I, I will echo that and I will say, um, yes, the, the getting into the food or the drink of a place, like what the people are consuming really ties you into that culture. And, and uh, you know, I have a little bit of Scottish in my history. Uh, I feel like this really draws me closer to those people. Um, so, yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Oh my God, this whiskey is so good. It really is. I still, I have to admit, I keep thinking about that peep peat fire in the storm though um we have not read the tasting notes for this andrew i think it's your turn oh it's my turn all right then here we go and i apologize in advance all right, then. Here we go. an amazing color of highly polished conkers was followed by a herbal whack almost slightly medicinal like a crushed aspirin but at the same time roasted chestnuts and black strap rum i can get that on the palate neat it reminded us of two classic cocktails, corn and oil, <laughs> classic co cocktail. Put you put some oil corn, in. put the oil in, it's, it's great. And the dark classic. and stormy, serious stuff. I had stuff. that drink recently, a corn and oil. Uh, what and what it is was it? really good. What is it's it? It's with, uh, oh shoot, I need to look at my emails for I mean, that. If it's corn, you can it's keep, keep going corn. and then I'll find what a corn and oil okay. is, but I, gotta I have whiskey do, you know. Serious stuff. Corn. All right, assertive spices met dark treacle toffee and an espresso to the power of four 
Oh yes, that's where the power for comes. Uh, with the addition of water, a dark sweetness of molasses appeared next to the caramelized figs, as well as prune and armagnac tart. The taste was that of a juicy pack of sultanas, raisins, stirred with a cinnamon stick and death by chocolate cake made with PX sherry. Now, we did we science this? I don't think any of us science no. it. No, fuck you. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Marie, I, I will take the full brunt of that fuck you because it was meant for me. So I I will take it. I, uh, I am uh, not offended by anything add, thrown my way. Did that science it? I science it, don't. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, Thank you. that's all the note we need. We don't Thank need you, Thad. Fun. Thank you. And I know what corn and oil is. Cor corn and oils is blackstrap rum, which was mentioned in the description. Mm -hmm. Falernum, which is a mixer, but I don't remember what's in it, and then lime. Huh. It's like a herbal. I think it's herbal. Hmm. It's like a kind of um, grog, really, like because grog is just lime juice and rum. That's how they got British sailors to to t to drink lime, so they wouldn't get scurvy, was to put it in rum. Well, and that's why I think it was like in the '60s that they stopped doing it. Like there was like a thing where grog was passed out to the sailors every day. They'd be like, everybody gets a shot of, of grog. And okay. like it, that ended in the 60s. Like that's what the, the, British, the British Navy was, was like, okay, we I guess we don't need to give people or drink lime juice by giving them rum at this point. But <laughs> grog is, I don't think grog is delicious. I tried mixing rum like with lime and it, I don't think it's delicious. I, I don't know. Maybe there's more ingredients I was missing. Does it need sugar? Or like, I don't know. Actually... I actually can tell you. Have you had a tiponche before? It's basically Again, bleep that out. Rum. What did you say? I don't, I sound rude. Tiponche is like small punch. That's what it means. And uh, in the Caribbean or Martinique, mm. where I think it originally comes from, it's just an agricole rum. So it's a funky rum, uh, not necessarily aged. And yeah, then you have rums. raw cane sugar and then a squeeze of rum. That's that is the that is the like it's basically limeade with rum in it is what you're talking what it's, you're talking about actually it's a straight drink like it's it's a small drink it's not you don't put soda water it's just the like sugar rum, the sugar, sugar was lime. like like grog like traditional grog did not have sugar in it it was just right. it was just rum and i think that would be a little I believe, yeah i believe yeah but yeah. siponge made me love agricole rum because i think it's one of the best ways to appreciate them they're so funky I do really like rum. Like rum is but, is a drink. I like one of the drinks that I make uh, during Christmas time is hot buttered rum, which is like I have a family recipe mm. that I that melt I do. butter and rum. Ugh. No, you put butter in it. That's one of the ingredients. Oh, I never. You had that. my hot buttered rum, Andrew, and you loved not, it. I'll have You've it. never had my hot buttered rum. I'll, I'll have it. it. I'll have it. I'll have it. Oh, dude, <laughs> it's good. I, I had it at someone's house, and. Um, it was really just like liquid butter and rum, and I'm like, I I can't do this. So that's not that's not the recipe that I use. Okay. All right, I will, I will try yours. It's like drinking, you know, uh, Santa Claus's blood. That's what it's like. It's <laughs> like that's the, the when I make it. It's like it's like oh, this is Christmas. Like that's yeah. It's I hey I I'm gonna I'm not gonna like you know I'm not gonna go halfway if I'm talking about something I'm good at. I'm good at a few things. I will mention them. All right, I will have it. Goodbye, Brooke Lassie. Thank you for sure, joining sure. us. Um, about, actually, it's about the end here. Uh, I, I, think I think so. Think. Uh, we have to ask a question, Marie Soleil. I, I hate to get serious at the end of the, all this fun. Let me let me ask it, Andrew. You oh, always yes, ask. I, I think I, I think I'll I'll ask it. Whoa, um, whoa. Roles are exchanged. Are you are you okay? Are you, are you ready to 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 answer the question? Take your time. I for am you. ready. I it am is ready. serious. We we we've had a lot of fun here. So now we need to kind of just. I had so much fun. We'll put the fun aside because now we're gonna we're gonna find out the truth. We've had four whiskeys. Spectacular today. whiskeys. Some would say that. So my my question to you: Do you like whiskey? Listen, uh, I'm not sure that I like whiskey. I think. I would rather say that I fucking love whiskey. So do I. Me too. <laughs> it 
do fucking love whiskey. Hey everybody, um, uh, thank you for tuning in. You at home, you, you make this thing fun for us to do. Uh, Marie Soleil, thank you so much for being our guest today. Just Thank just you, thank you, thank you, thank you, fun. thank you so much. Um, thank you, Outpost 13. Thank you, Thad. <clears throat> Thaddeus Weisinger, who is our technician and does the miracles that you saw over here. Um, uh, Aaron Harvey for our graphics, Cody Bushy for a bot, and uh, hey, there are still, I think, two more sample bottles for next weekend, May the 15th. If you are in the LA area and you want to join us with the tasting, I've got uh, four sample bottles. You can buy them for 15 bucks plus four buck uh, deposit, so 19 bucks total. You'll get the four bucks back if you bring the bottles back. Um, you can join in with, on the tasting with us and, and type in the chat what you're tasting. So there's there's four things. And, and one of them is our bag. We could also, how can you go wrong? You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. I would, I would buy two ounces of that for for 15 bucks, it's, it sounds like a deal. Um, also, uh, if you are uh, enjoying this show and you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe to this channel. If you're Amazon Prime, you can do it for free. You can do it for free if you have not subscribed to other channels, of course, because the first one's free. But please, Outpost 13 needs your up. They have so many great things on here. Um, there's a single person RPG. There's a, a friend fiction where they talk about people they love in fiction, um, just mu much like we talk about whiskey we love. Um, there is a made up music where they are making up a song live interactively in front of you on this thing. Um, there is Trek Table, which talks about, you know, um, uh, biopic people in, in the Trek uh, realm and, and, and making room for everybody in the Trek universe, which is kind of, I think, where Gene Roddenberry wanted Trek to go because it, it was about inclusion. Anyways, follow us on YouTube. Uh, I love you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marie Soleil, for being on our show. And uh, we fucking love whiskey. We fucking love whiskey.